MJF and Adam Cole have a team bonding session. You know what's funny is uh, there was... You know, Everything about this is funny. Something people have been talking about the last week or so is, you know, this mellow drum and wrestling. I don't like this, all this bloodline and this and that, even though it's like the most successful storyline in a whole generation. Years, yeah, yeah. But anyway, there's all this talk about that this week. And then we have this show where there's so much fucking melodrama on this show. And it's so great. <laughs> this MJF Adam Cole storyline. Like, well, anyway, they're out drinking. Four shots in by the time we join them. Yes. And MJF says, you know, I don't think you're being a team player lately, Adam. Why aren't you wearing the shirt? And Adam says, I lost it. And so four women show up. MJF says, look at that. There's two for me. By my math, he says, two for me and two for you. Cole goes, nah, come on. And MJF goes, I can make these cameras disappear. Cole goes, no, I actually really care about Britt Baker. And so MJF says, well, sounds to me like four more for daddy. He, he, before that, he says, wow, that's respectable as hell. <laughs> you are so brave. So, Four more for daddy, he says. He goes off with the ladies. Yeah. And then later, of course, he returns. And he's all spent. He declares the maximum ride is spent. And as he Cole, apparently had his way with all four of them. Cole goes, dude, you can't say that shit on television. That's just not right. And so MJF goes, where are we going to go next? Cole says, you know, I got a confession. I actually didn't lose the shirt. I've got it. And in fact... I will put that shirt on right here, right now. All you have to do is do what I want to do next. And MJF goes, oh, yeah, what's that? And Cole whispers in his ear, and MJF is appalled. And they cut to presumably, you know, Adam Cole brings his whole gaming system to each hotel room. I can buy that, yeah. And, uh, and they're sitting there, and they've got the video game console, and MJF is fucking aghast. And Cole says, dude. You're in the game. They're playing fight forever. Your stats are really good. Yes. MJF goes, really? What does that even mean? So they start playing the game. And they're playing the game. And it's it's like me playing Dig Dug, actually. You know, I'm, I'm finding this to be fun. And MJF says, you know, this is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to play with a buddy. Cole goes, w wait a minute. You've never played a multiplayer game? What did he call it? Because I've never played one either. You have you never played multiplayer Multiplayer before, game. Yes. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I presume that's more than one player, obviously. And uh, Multi meaning more than one. Well, see, no, player meaning no, person who plays no, the game. No, Vinny, you idiot. Because I was playing Dig Dug this weekend, and there's one player and there's two player mode. You're not playing together. Y I play, I get a rock dropped on myself, and then the other person gets to play. But it's not like we're playing against each other. Okay. It's like it's my turn, well, and then it's your turn. A current multiplayer game is we're all playing together. Yes, you're right. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. That's what they're playing. In well, fact, Jeff in fact, doesn't understand this. In fact, Brian, they're not playing against each other. They are playing co-op. They are yes. working together in this game. Exactly. And Cole says, you've never played multiplayer before? And MJF goes, well, you got to have friends for that. And Cole says, Max, hit pause. <laughs> he says, I'll be honest with you. You know, when we were forced to team, I had every intention of blindsiding you and cutting your legs out from under you. <laughs> That's nuts! Says <laughs> MJF. MJF goes, I was going to do the same to you! I was going to do the same. They laugh. <laughs> Ah, we were both going to be shitheads. And Cole says, you know what? You're pretty cool. Max goes, you know, you're cool too. And you know what? Let's say we win these tag titles together. And so they start playing the video game, and they team up together on this fucking fight forever, and they win the tag team titles in the video game, and they slow motion. Whoosh, they high five. This was fucking incredible <laughs> renee interviews adam cole or tries to interview adam cole he's talking to Britt baker on the phone there's a lot of that in wrestling going on people trying to interview someone who's on already on the phone call but uh, adam does apologize because he's a gentleman uh well i don't know he was he was trying to plead his case and she hung up on him i see yeah uh, he, well, he apologized to renee for uh being on the phone well sure yes roddy steps up still wearing his neck brace concerned he hopes adam is not actually starting to like this guy and Adam tries to reassure him, but he's interrupted by a text. MJF is still texting about T-shirts and double clotheslines, and also maybe having the flu. And so Cole storms off to deal with this. <laughs> well, no. I mean, it's essentially it, but 
he's he, he first off he's he's arguing with his girlfriend because she's mad at him because she must have heard about the four women and he's trying to say i would never do something like that i hadn't thought of that she hangs up on him <laughs> so he's like ah oh, fuck and then he goes through the interview and that's when roddy walks up and he's like you can't possibly be starting to like this guy and cole goes he's not a bad dude in fact, Roddy, you and I, when we first met, you know, we weren't best friends, but now you're like a brother to me. And that's when he gets the text. And, like, all this shit's going down, but he gets his text, and he just gets this big smile on his face. And he just goes, that's for Max. He says, uh, you know, make sure to wear the shirt, and uh, don't forget the double clothesline. He's laughing. And then he gets another text, and it says, oh, Max just says he saw Brian Cage walking by, and now he's got the flu. I, I gotta take this. And he walks off screen, and he goes, Max! Max, you're not sick. And he's not sick. He's not sick. We see seconds later. The very next match is MGF and Adam Cole versus Brian Cage and Big Bill. Now, allow me for a moment. Mm -hmm. Somebody described this match as a house show main event, but that's not in any way a, uh, you know, a negative. Sure. And if you've ever gone to a house show and you've seen a main event... And it's like a bunch of comedy early and just making the fans happy and all this and that and not killing yourself. And actually, you know, they don't really do that much nowadays. But that's the old house show main event. And and this this thing right here, I was dying watching this match. So MJF is a heel, but he's working babyface as a total heel. And the fans, like, I don't know if they don't get it. I think they do get it. But they are totally into this guy as a baby face. I mean, 100% they're into him as a baby face. And they come out, and they're a baby face tag team. And MJF is being the most sarcastic, over-the-top, bullshit, old-school baby face. And the people are fucking eating it up. And, of course, first he says, Who out there wants to see a body slam? They're like, yay! And so he walks up to... Uh, Big Bill. I think it was Brian Cage first, wasn't it? Either way, they're both, Either way, they're it doesn't both matter. big. Yeah. Hey, he tries to uh, he tries to slam it. It was actually Bill. Hey, he tries to slam him, and his back gives out. And then he tries to tag out, and he tries to leave, and Cole talks him into coming back. And so then uh, Big Bill tags in. MJF goes, "I'm gonna hit that body slam," and he goes for the body slam. His back gives out again. And then you know they've been doing this this push up spot, so he goes to do push ups, and Bill boots him for the heat. That's the heat. And I'm just watching this going. You haven't taken one bump yeah. yet in this match. And so they kind of work him over there for a little while. And then they rip off the, the shirt that they've been pushing. And that's massive heat because he ripped off MJF and Adam Cole's shirt. And so finally, MJF grabs him by the neck for a choke slam. And Max responds by biting his way free. And then he grabs this man and he lifts him up. And he gives him a fucking body slam. And, like, they do the long Okada Rainmaker shot. The long, uh, you know, the the hard cam. Sure, sure. And fucking the whole audience, they jump up, they put their arms in there, they start screaming, they're so happy. And then he does the giant leaping. But bam, he gets a hot hand. Adam Cole hits the ring, he's running wild. The fans are chanting, double clothesline. Amazing. But they get cut off. And MGF finally hits the heat seeker. Cole hits the boom and he gets the pin. And, of course, then they have this stuff afterwards, and uh, we can get to that in a moment. But here's my point. I got so much. To, I could talk for hours about this. So I remember before AEW ever started, it was WrestleMania weekend. I do not remember the show, but it was just like an indie show, and, and Orange Cassidy was on the show. And Orange Cassidy's there. He's doing all of his shtick. And I'm talking, like, not the AEW shtick. I'm talking... The old school Orange Cassidy shtick. And the fans are fucking eating it up. And it's got more heat than anything on this show. And it was like a six person or something like that. And they're just doing nothing but pleasing the fans. And, you know, then, of course, Orange Cassidy gets signed. And what's the first thing that, that we hear? This will never get over. This shit will, this indie shit will never get over. Now, granted, he did change it up a bit, but... That indie shit got over. And if you watch this match right here, this was a match out of an indie show in the middle of fucking nowhere where nobody wanted to get hurt. 
and they did it on national television with the AEW World Champion. Yeah. Now, the people I'm sure w would say the, this is never going to work on, you know, uh, whatever, the national stage. The highest rated quarter on this show was Jericho's match. Okay. I don't know what the lead in was, but I'm sure that that helped to a degree. But as far as 18 to 49, this segment, well, this in total viewers, this was the second highest rated thing on the show. And in 18 to 49, it was the highest. It did not turn off any viewers. It got over as big with the television audience as it did with the live audience. You just got to entertain the people. And when I watched it, my other thought was, fuck me, dude. Like, the thing with WWE is, in the old days, if something like this started to get over, they'd crush it. Okay? Nowadays, they won't do that, but they very much stick to their plans. So they had this long-term plan with, with you know, Roman Reigns, obviously, and that meant that Drew could not beat him in Cardiff. Sami Zayn could not beat him in Montreal. You know, the Sami Zayn in Montreal, that had been booked for months. That wasn't something that they decided on because Sami Zayn got over. It was always, that was always going to be that pay-per-view, and Sami was always going to, and they've stuck with all of their plans. And I watched this thing here, and it's like, you know they're wrestling in Wembley. MGF and Adam Cole are going to wrestle in Wembley. Yeah. They're going to break up. And I'm so fucking pissed <laughs> because, like, this is so great. We're right back where we were when I was fucking arguing that MGF should have gone babyface when he came back in September. And he was so over. He was the most over babyface on the entire show. And it's like, fuck, just go with it, dude. If it don't work, you turn him heel again. But this is working. This is organic. Do it. And they didn't do it. Well, now here we fucking are again. This guy's pretending to be a fucking babyface. He's the most over babyface on the show. His team with Adam Cole is the most over act on the show right now. Like, it's doing numbers. I'm like, fuck, could we just go with this for a while? Go through fucking Chicago or whatever. Like, I know he's the champion and everything, and you want world title matches and everything, but this is fucking working. And it's fun, and it's exciting, and the fans love it. And I'm afraid it's over in two weeks. God. I, I, you brought this up a week or two ago, and I was, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 I, indifferent. I'm 100% in lockstep with you now. This is lightning in a bottle, and they need to capture it and ride it as long as it lasts. The, 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 the promos are great. The matches are great. They're different. It's not the kind of thing we've seen in a long time. Like, uh... I don't know, uh, MVP and Matt Hardy 20 years ago was almost that long. Uh, last time we had the, 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 the mismatched tag team that actually does get along working, and they weren't over like this. And God bless the guys. They're not as good as MGF and Adam Cole. And they had so much fun doing this. Uh, it, it was totally a house show match. Body slam attempts, push-up contest. There was a, fun, a, a sign in the crowd reading who wants push-ups. I don't know if that's what inspired them to do push-ups or if that's just... Uh, crazy coincidence but it worked out well and eventually they do get the heat in mjf and he's your asshole in peril and the key is when uh when, when cole took off his shirt uh, jacket at the beginning he was wearing the better than you baby shirt and mjf was so happy and then when they tore off mjf shirt and big bill's wiping his ass with it and stuff and it's it's like the icw icwa text arcana television title and Larry Sweeney cut that promo on him once. He said, I know it's a joke to everyone else. It ain't a joke to me! And made the whole thing so serious. This t-shirt is not a joke to MJF. It's a big, big deal. And when they tore that shirt and besmirched that shirt, that was a slap in the face. That's when he fired up and made his comeback. That's when they pushed him too far. So he finally hits the big body slam. And he dusts himself with cage, has to roll around him, makes the big tag. Cole's running wild. And not that if Cole has been an angel in AEW, but it's worth noting that part of his comeback was doing the MGF eye poke. Because <laughs> Cole is getting more evil, and MGF is getting gooder. I don't know about that. More heroic. Yeah. Sure. So uh, they keep trying this double clothesline. They're those two monsters who avoid it, and then double clothesline them. And then they, they finally overcome, and they work together to get the win. It's magic. Pro wrestling is magic sometimes. See, that's the thing, brother. Like, 
it, it, this is an organic thing, and it's the right place and the right time, and it's the right guys. Like, when MJF came back, it was organic how over that guy was. Now, when you think about all of the different feuds that MJF has had, I'm not saying that it couldn't have been as good with him and Moxley doing this or him and Jericho. Like, it's kind of impossible to know because it didn't happen. But what I do know is MJF and Cole are perfect together. Adam Cole is so fucking great playing opposite MJF in this storyline. And part of it also is because you know Adam Cole has been a heel many, many times. He's a nice guy now. We like him, but we know what he is capable of doing. And MJF is bringing that out of them. And they're playing off each other great. And they're like the odd couple. And it's just, it's this is so good. I do not want this to end in two no. weeks. No, I want to go for a long, long time. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.